guys around the house. Today we're looking at part 19 of my series of loft conversion videos. We're going to be slating the rear of the roof, we're going to be slating the rear dormer, fitting some lead valleys and fitting some lead soakers. First thing to do today is carry on the felt support tray. I'm not going to put the fascia on there because I want access underneath to do this old roof here. I'll just show you that now. And that's this bit of roof here, not part of the loft conversion. soakers. First I'm just going to take off this piece of fascia which will be temporarily fixed to the side with one screw. Get this out of the way then I can get access inside. a bit poor from up there I'll just show you the lead soakers so going from the bottom of the cheek of this door mat I work my way up there and when you just get to the top one it's a little bit shorter what I've done put a trim down the corner I've turned it around the back there and folded it up that way now all this is going to be behind the fascia underneath the soffit but it does mean if you get any water ingress it's just going to try and turn it back around and bring it back down the roof on the slates and obviously this bit here, we're going to have the lead valley going up there, which we'll see later on. So it's another day, we're back at it, we're going to try and finish slating this rear dormer roof. So I'm just going to cut a few slates down to size now, get them up on the roof and hopefully fit them into place fairly quickly. you quickly all proper pace he's been doing this side so we got to about there but we haven't done the lead work up the valley yet so we've got to leave that there he then went down carried on with a bit of slating across the bottom so you can see we've got that up to the dormer so far we've got the bottom of our lead soaker sticking out there another thing proper pace did the other day he made a nice um, infill there on the front of this rear dormer the same as he did on the other side so if we undo a screw on that you can pop the whole thing out which is covered in felt so you can get access in and out if we need it until the project's finished. 
Now let's pop round to the other side. If we take a look at this side, you can see that I've slated almost all the way. We did this lead work earlier. Um, I'm probably going to have to trim a bit of this lead off eventually. But it's what I'm trying to do is get this nicely around my fascia board there. So any water coming down is going to curve down and down this roof. And then it means then that essentially, although I've done the lead soakers all the way up under there, we'll have our soffit board across here. And all that bit should stay bone dry all the time. But again, it's belt and braces really. We want to keep that as dry as we can. And as I showed you earlier in this video or a previous video, we curled that last lead soaker up and over. So any water that gets up should come back down. But I don't think that's going to happen anyway. That batten is just placed there at the moment as a guide, to be honest, for my line. It's only loose. So eventually we'll have like a, a four inch um, gutter or gully going down there. I say four inch roughly with the two battens. When we come back tomorrow, I'm going to try and do the lead valley on this side. We'll put a piece of lead over the top. Um, hopefully I'll get the lead soakers done against the chimney and maybe slate up to the chimney. We'll go from there, see how long that takes. If you look over there, a beautiful post sunset. I don't know if the camera's doing this justice actually, but what I can see is beautiful pink clouds over there. Lovely blue sky. Really nice evening for September after all the bad weather we've just had this past week. Time to go and have a cup of tea. Okay, so it's the next day. Very breezy today, quite chilly, but nice and sunny, so that's all good. Now, yesterday, I was obviously slating up to the lead valley that we put in on the other side of this dormer. Now, unfortunately, I've got to put a little bit of lead overlapping the top of the two valleys. So to get that in, I've got to get this piece of lead in to get the top one in to then allow me to carry on slating on the other side. So it's one of those things, it's an order of process and unfortunately I've got to do one thing before I can get on with finishing the other. So there we go. So I'm going to beat the top bit into place but I'm going to leave this bit rolled up here because I need to sort out the fascia board later on. Tuck this lead into these slates when I come up this section of roof. So that's something to do in another video. So for now, there's got two nails at the top. I've rolled it down so far, it means I can get my bit of lead over the top now, and I can continue with the other side. Something I also forgot to mention was that the lead I'm using on these valleys is code four. Now you could use a code five, or sometimes recommended, but for one this short, I'm not really too bothered. Four is ample. Three is too thin, so the three you use are like the lead soakers that you've seen me doing in previous videos. This particular roll here is 45 centimeters wide, or 450 mil, which I think is the equivalent of 18 inches. And then the bit over the top, because that's going sideways, it doesn't actually need to be as wide. So that one, I've got another roll of um, code 4, and that one is 300 millimeters wide. So I'll show you me doing that now. So I've tacked that now with two nails at the top, and these will be underneath the ridge tile, so out of harm's way. And now we've got these two bits of lead in. You can see, when we put this slate over the top, We'll have another one going up this side later on and you get that nice neat edge up there so it's all you'll see is this little fold which to be honest you'll never see that from then the bottom anyway. So that's all those slates done. I'll just show you that now. But if you look here, you can see a nice line there. Obviously again, like I said yesterday, these battens are just temporary. I've just put them there to give me my my line really to work against with the slates. So I'm just going to do the slates on this little section here against the chimney and do my lead soakers as I go up. that done took long enough anyway you've got your lead valley down there see going nicely down there shooting off I'm gonna trim that lead when I finish but I'm gonna leave it like that for now until I finish the roof I've put the final old bit of lead back over the top you can see there's that other sort of lead apron underneath I had to use a little um, lead strap on that 
just for belt and braces. There's a few nails in the bottom, but I don't always trust that the weight of it. Um, tied it into next doors. I've used the old lead flashing over the top, put those back into place. I've tapped a few um, bits of lead to hold them in place for now. And I'm going to come back up when the roof's done and put in some roofing sealant rather than mortar because it's a bit better, it's a bit more flexible. And finally, something I forgot to mention was obviously the lead soakers you saw me putting in. Now, those are all out of sight, but they're the things that really keep it dry because they turned up the wall and they come out this way. And each bit of lead throws the water onto the next slate and so on. Another day up on the roof, yesterday we got to a point where we couldn't really go any further and it was starting to get dark. So we slated up to the corner of the cheek of the dormer, we've got two lead soakers in, see that one, another slate to go on top, but now I'm going to do um, a slate and a half on there, and believe it or not, the first time this has happened on this project, that it's all lined up for me. I've come off this roof and on that side I went straight into a, a full cut slate, just by chance, and as we come along it's the exact width of full slates again. So if you look there, our first slate is another full slate and the back onto slate and a half, so no cutting them down to odd sizes, which is really bizarre, but just purely coincidence. Now today we're down on this hip of the roof here, and I'll just show you this. Where we've come up over the top, over this ridge, I've got to follow that slate line and back down, but obviously with slating you start from the bottom up. So the way I've done this, I've cut my first slate to size up there, and then I've just put some uh, loose tacks to these full slates here, just to give me the line and the width of the slates. So when I get down to here, I know that I'm onto this slate. Measure off that onto here, half a slate from there to there. So I've got all my spacings now, basically. So working from the bottom now, I can work my way up, removing these slates one by one, and hopefully by the time I get to the top, I've got the right alignment um, horizontally and vertically. Well, that's the plan anyway. We'll see how it works out. But I'm going to knock the camera off now because it's taking up a lot of uh, camera time. There's a lot of fiddly work. And you can come back to me when I'm back in line with it and we'll see how it worked out. So there we go. That took a while. But by using those slates that I tacked in earlier temporarily, it gave me the alignment and the space in to work from the eaves course back up using those to get alignment of all my slates. If you look, we managed to get all the way back up to the little ridge of this section of roof here. And now from there, I've just got to put in another full slate and a cut one at an angle there. And then we're off again up to the cheek of the dormer. So by just working my way along there, we can get up diagonally following these slates. And when we get up there, we'll have a straight run and we can start doing the lead soakers, get up to the top of the cheek of that dormer. Then we can do this lead roll, bring that over the top. And then we're going to meet that opening for the Velux very soon after. So we'll have to do that another day, but hopefully if I can keep at it today, have a quick cup of tea now, get back on it, and we might just get up to there and get all the lead working, which would be nice. And if you go underneath, you can see that we've done all these soakers now, right the way up. You look at the top, we've just done another one there, a bit shorter, curved it up and back down. Now we can continue down with all these slates and then we're just working along here now and we're going to do this eaves course, place a new baton here so we can get our triple lap and start working our way back up there. Then when we get to this Velux window, obviously we're going to have to stop and start doing the soakers around there and so on. Just click 
overview of what we've done today. Finished off the slating on this roof. Again, you can see the uh, full slate, slate and a half, over by the front there. If you look up there, we've done uh, slates into the valley. Now, I can't do this side here until I've got this valet's window in, because you have to do the soapers on the valet and work your way back out. And then we're going to have to cut the, the slate and a half, so single slates along there then. Now here you saw me earlier whip out this bottom bit of batten and I've lowered it across there because that's actually where the bottom of the valex needs to be so that's in preparation for doing the valex. Um, the other thing we've done today is we've worked across this eaves course here um, getting your triple lap there. Um, then I've tucked a bit of lead under there because that's going to go over the top of our hip or right here or ridge tile and then what I'm going to do is put a slightly wider bit of lead under this, tuck it up and under and I can fold that over if need be when we do the roof we'll see how we go. Up on there the other thing to note which I think I may have showed you before is obviously we've got the felt support tray again we trimmed that off diagonally up there to allow the, um, the lead to fold over so the lead I've beaten that down I'll do it a bit more when we get the fascia in permanently it's only held on with one screw at the moment. If we look down this bit of the roof there Papa Pie's just finished off the last few slates that I hadn't finished the other day and then if you look, Papa Pice has just done the rest of these slates the eaves course across there today with a lead soaker. Just left a little gap there so we still got access into the loft without damaging the slates. So that's it for today's video and as always if you enjoyed the video please give it a like, feel free to subscribe and press the bell symbol for regular notifications. So for more DIY, how-to, household tips and product review please watch my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. I've been Pice around the house. Ta-ta, farewell.